right, good afternoon, everyone. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, we've, we've all been, uh, we all may have heard about uh, Lloyd Holmes, a veteran educator with a track record of removing barriers to student success, became president of De Anza College in July of 2020. And this is his fourth, he is the college's fourth president since its founding in 1967. It's hard to believe that there's, uh, really there's such st stability am amongst all the change that's been taking place in our community. Before joining De Anza, Holmes was vice president of student services at Monroe Community College, College in Rochester, New York, part of the State University of New York. I'm such a provincial, I had to ask someone, is like, do you pronounce that? How do you pronounce SUNY? Well, it's pronounced SUNY. Um, then, uh, uh, but he provided statewide leadership at SUNY by mentoring other colleges on the student success initiative and serving on a statewide task force on student hunger. Uh, with no further ado, it is my very distinct pleasure to introduce uh, Lloyd Holmes and uh, Lloyd, it's 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 all yours. Thank you so much. I am just delighted to be here this afternoon, uh, and I certainly wish that we all would, were able to meet in in person. Uh, but I think that all of us recognize that with the pandemic, it's better to be safe than than sorry. And so I'm glad to have this opportunity to meet you virtually, and I look forward to a time where we're able to come together uh, and meet face to face. I always say that there's something about the energy that you can share um, with each other by meeting face to face. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, other thing that, that I think is, it was really interesting that I was laughing about just before I got on the call, uh, someone said, well, actually, and it was before everyone was let in, someone said that I was one of the most popular persons that no one has ever met. And so, uh, <laughs> so, I, so I've been laughing at that within and, and saying, you know, I don't, I, you know, hopefully uh, this, with this presentation, um, you will look forward to our, our future meetings. I want to begin this presentation, before I, I go to my slideshow, I want to begin by saying that we may never fully see the impact of our work. So we must focus not on what we can see. We have to believe that the work that we're doing will have a positive impact on the future. And, and, and that this, this impact that we can have, we won't see it in the present. We, won't, we, we can't see the future right now. And so we have to believe that the work that we're doing is going to have a positive impact on, on the lives of not just ourselves, but the lives of, of, of our fellow uh, members of our community, uh, an impact on the state as well as an impact on the nation and the world. So with that, I want to turn it over uh, to my PowerPoint. Uh, so if we can start the PowerPoint and I will, uh, and I'll begin. Okay. I wanna thank the, uh, the gods who are sitting in the back and controlling my, my PowerPoint slides. So, uh, so I don't have to focus on moving the, uh, moving the slides forward. Uh, so next slide, please. I, I think that, that as you, you think about um, the president of, of De Anza College, I think that oftentimes people will say, well, you know, who is this person and, and, and can we have a little bit about his background so, so that we know who it is that we're dealing with? Um, I'm oftentimes saying publicly that I'm always asking, every time I've taught a class, I've asked my, my students, to write a, a paper uh, entitled, This is Who I Am. And when I came to, to De Anza, uh, one of the first communications that I put out uh, was a statement about who I am and what it is that's important to me, what I'm about and sort of what has shaped who I am today. So I'll, I'll be very brief because uh, I don't know that y'all necessarily wanna hear, um, you know, 15 or 20 minutes of, of my, my personal story, uh, but I think that, that what I'll share can sort of shape 
uh, tell you who I am and how I ended up where I am today. Uh, so I, I, my story begins in, Missis in Mississippi, um, and I grew up in a, a single parent home. Uh, it wasn't by choice, it was, it was by, by circumstance. And I grew up extremely, extremely poor. Um, I oftentimes let people know that, that uh, you know, I got my first pair of store-bought jeans when I was in sixth grade. And so I, I truly understand what it was like uh, being extremely poor. Uh, but I had a mother who always uh, wanted to make certain that, that her two boys understood that our present situation should not determine where we ended up in life and that we truly should, should work hard to achieve uh, all that we could, that we should work hard to be the best that we possibly could be. And so uh, I did extremely well in, in, in high school uh, and made the decision to go to a community college uh, because I, was, I wanted to major in pre-architecture. Uh, and then transfer to a four-year uh, architecture program. Well, I was taking physics in uh, my first semester, and and the only class that I studied was physics, and I ended up with, with a B in that class and a B in everything else, because if I didn't get it in the classroom, I wasn't going to get it. And so the second semester, um, I ended up changing my, my major to accounting, because I thought I was good at, I mean, I said, you know, I'm really good at math. I, I never took a math course that I couldn't do well in. And so I, I, I did my undergrad work. I mean, my, my uh, uh, the rest of my work at the community college in accounting, got an accounting degree there, um, went on to the University of Mississippi where I obtained a, a, a bachelor of accountancy degree, uh, had some really interesting experiences while, while at the University of Mississippi uh, that really sort of shaped my passion uh, for working in education. Uh, and so then I, I ended up uh, doing my master's in higher education student personnel services at the University of Mississippi, uh, and then did a PhD in educational leadership there. Um, I've served at both two-year institutions, four-year institutions, and and across across the nation. I was I was in you know Mississippi, South Carolina, Massachusetts, New York, and now um, you know I'm I'm thrilled to say that I I have this amazing honor to serve as the president of one of the best community colleges in the country, one of the best community colleges in the country, and that's an honor that that I never when I was this poor guy in Mississippi I never thought that I would end up in my in my present situation. So so I'm thrilled to be here, and with that we'll move on to the next slide. So I want to begin by talking about um, who we serve as 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 a um, as an institution and how we go about doing that. And the first thing that I want to to bring up is our Measure G bond issue. With Measure G, I I, I want to thank each and every one of you for the support that has been shown to De Anza College and to the Foothill College, to our district um, in support, the, the support that you gave in, in, in passing Measure G. Uh, as you, you are probably aware, 59% uh, of the district voters approved that in March of, of 2020 with $898 million that will be spread over 15 years as needed for upgrades and, and repairs to both classrooms, labs, uh, as well as uh, buildings. Uh, so, so I want to thank you for, for the support that, that you have given. Without that support, uh, De Anza and, uh, and, and the district uh, would not be able to, to do some of the things that we're going to be able to do that truly impact not just the lives of our students, but it's truly going to impact what we do in, in the community. The thing that I think is very important that you hear from me up front is that I see De Anza not just being in the community, we have to be of the community. Next slide, please. So as we talk about who it is that we serve, I have a, a pie chart here that tells you, tells you um, our, 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 some of our demographics. You'll see that 47% of our, of our students are Asian American, Pacific Islander, uh, Philippine X descent, while 27% is Latinx, 17% white, 5% are black, and, and then we have 5% that's classes that we classify as other. 
Our enrollment, we're really thrilled that, that our enrollment at, at De Anza is stable. You know, I walked into an, in, to, uh, a college and to a district where, where we've had stable enrollment. You look at other institutions across the state, across the nation. Some of these institutions are down double digits. I was just talking to, uh, to the institution that I came from, Monroe Community College. They were down 26%. 26%. And so it truly says something about what De Anza is, who De Anza is for us to have this, this stable enrollment. About 30% of our students are first generation uh, with about 25% being low income. And this is, this is a figure that I want you all to, to, to think about uh, as I continue in, in, into um, my presentation to the thought that 25% of our students are, are from households that earn $25,000 or less. That's important for us to think about as we move forward. The next slide that as I talk about being of the community, uh, yes, please uh, go back. Trying to make certain that we, we don't miss any. Okay, now the next slide. Thank you, right there. As we're talking about being, being of the community, you know, I, I don't know that, that many people know, you know, when we look at our relationship with our local school districts, when you look at the 2020 graduates from the Fremont Union High School District, De Anza had 3,012 students enrolled in De Anza. 3,012. So one out of four college bound uh, Fremont Union grads enrolled at De Anza. The next highest went to UC Berkeley and that was 964. So that tells you the relationship that we have with our local high schools. And that's a relationship that I as the president say that we have to continue to grow that relationship. That's extremely important. And, and we have to figure out how we can continue to collaborate as we are working on improving uh, the, the educational pipeline for, for our community. Next slide, please. The next area as we're talking about, as we're talking about who we serve, I think many of you are, are familiar with our community education programs. Uh, these programs are just amazing and we're serving uh, quite a number of individuals through, our, through uh, these particular programs. Many of you are familiar with our Diaz Academy where, we've, where we serve about 2,100 students. Uh, if you look at, at the number of visits or individuals who took classes from the Euphrat Museum, uh, and our, uh, note that our figures are from 2019 uh, because our numbers were down because of, of the pandemic. So we would not expect our numbers to be really high there. Uh, but if you notice, I mean, almost uh, 10,800 individuals visited or took classes at the Euphrat. Uh, our planetarium, 33,566. That's amazing. And that talks about the importance for us of building that relationship with the community and, and being able to, to provide those educational programs that the community is asking for. On a side note, I wanna make certain that all of you know that our Euphrat Museum um, uh, uh, displays have, have uh, or art exhibitions, they are online now. So I would encourage you to go online to look at those. Next slide, please. So why is it that, that De Anza is doing an amazing job with its enrollment? The first thing that I will, I will tell you is that De Anza has a really, really strong reputation. When I was sitting at my institution in New York, I knew about De Anza. And it's interesting that, that um, September prior to the pandemic hitting, I was talking to, to, my, to, to my staff at, the, at Monroe Community College in Rochester, New York, 
talking to them about coming out to, to California, to Cupertino, to make a visit to De Anza because of the amazing work that De Anza is doing. So the reputation isn't just local, it's national. We have some amazing wraparound services. You know, as we, we, we move, to, move to, to online, you know, we have really thought about how do we serve our students best and that transition has been smooth. The other thing that I will, I will say from this slide is that when you look at the outreach that has occurred from uh, De Anza, we're doing some extensive outreach and doing outreach to where we're really thinking outside of the box. And so, so we have to do that. And I think as a result of that, as a result of that, we are, are truly uh, maintaining our enrollment and we're uh, uh, maintaining our interest from members of the community um, on connecting with De Anza. So next slide. Now, we have uh, really an amazing tagline. And, and I think that oftentimes, uh, you know, when, when you mention, mention De Anza, people will say tops and transfers, tops and transfers. People know that time, that, that tagline. And, and, I, and I also uh, don't want us to forget the rest of that tagline, the end more part, uh, because that, that truly is, is uh, uh, a critical part of who we are. So De Anza is always at the top or near the top uh, when it comes to transfers to four-year institutions. You'll see our numbers of, of individuals who transferred uh, to UC, to CSU, as well as the private uh, and out-of-state universities uh, in our 2017-18 year. We still are gathering the figures for the years after, but, but that number is, is consistent. Next slide, please. We think about career training. You know, as we, as we think about where do we go as, as an institution and how do we become uh, an even better institution than we already are. We recognize that, that the career training programs that we offer, we cannot just rest on our laurels. You know, we have won awards. Our job placement rates are great. Uh, we work with industry experts, but we recognize that there's an opportunity for us to do more. And so we're having, having those discussions about how do we continue to be tops in, in career training and how do we meet the needs of, of the local community? How do we engage with members of, of, of the chamber uh, so that we can find out from an institution what it is that, that, that you need? How do we offer those accelerated programs so that we can get you the workforce that you need in the time that you need. How do we begin to think, you know, not just at, in the now, but what is it going to look like? What do we project it looking like five years from now, 10 years from now? And how do we work already to make certain that we're meeting, that we will be able to meet that need? Next slide, please. So we we then so we I want to talk very very uh, talk for the next few slides talk about how do we you know we, we get our students in and how do we support them um, you know as we're maintaining these enrollments you know individuals who come to the institution if they don't have the necessary support then those students don't remain at the institution. And so we've had some, some, uh, some really, really good supports in place uh, for our students. We have a student success center where we offer peer tutoring in math, science, English, and other subjects. Uh, we have an office of outreach where we're really um, engaging with our early contacts in high schools. And then we also have our learning communities that are providing these supportive networks for our students. Uh, next slide, please. One of the things that, that we recognize at De Anza is that when individuals, whether they are in school, whether they are a part of the chamber, uh, whether they are in our, our social groups, we recognize that individuals have certain needs. Some of those needs that individuals have, we say are psychological needs. And those things are like, you know, uh, a sense of belonging, feeling like they, that they belong to an institution. Uh, individuals wanna have fun. 
individuals want to to have freedom or the ability to make to make choices individuals want to feel important and those things we say are psychological needs but the thing that we recognize is that if those physiological needs that individuals have aren't met then the, those psychological needs become secondary and those, those physiological needs are the things that, that people require at their very core, the need for food, clothing, and shelter. Those are the basic needs that individuals have. Food, clothing, and shelter. We recognize that. And as a college, we recognize that when we have students who are sitting in classrooms that are hungry, those students aren't going to be as successful in the classroom. When we have students who are, who are coming to our classes, who are, who are couch surfing, who don't know where, where they're going to lay their heads at night, those students most likely will not do as well in the classroom. And so we have tried to partner on resources for basic needs. Uh, one of the strongest partnerships that we have that, that we're thrilled about and we're constantly talking about how do we grow that partnership is with, with West Valley Community Services. Um, and and we're, we're talking, you know, we have their mobile food pantry that comes to visit campus. We're talking about how do we expand the services there. Uh, we're so pleased that, that the city of Cupertino provided us with a $25,000 grant uh, for rental assistance and, and we're working with this house, house sharing program. Those things are just amazing. We have some, some emergency cash grants that we have offered our students through, through the CARES Act. Uh, so those things are, 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 have just been, just been wonderful in support of our students. And then in addition to that, uh, you know, we have a food pantry on, on the campus, but it's temporarily closed. We're offering, offering um, grocery cards to our students. So we recognize that it's beyond a food pantry. We have to do more to provide support for, for our students in need. It goes back to the slide previously, where I talked about the number of students who live in, in, these, in these families that are bringing in less than $25,000 a year. So we could not ask for better partners uh, in addressing these basic needs that our students have. And we will continue to do that. Next slide, please. Um, I think many of you are probably familiar with the De Anza College Promise, which offers free tuition and fees for two years. Uh, plus, we are, it, it provides $1,000 for books and materials, and it's available for our first-time college students who are attending full-time. So I just want, want to mention that. Next slide. We also want to, you know, we, rec we got a list of, of the cost of textbooks. And we recognize that there are some courses where the text for those for those courses, you know, run up five hundred dollars. And so we are um, we're trying we're finding ways to offer free and low cost textbooks to our students. And in our catalog, we're also uh, marking those so that students can easily identify them. That's a part of, of, of helping students to meet their basic needs. The less they can spend on a textbook, the more they can spend on supporting their families. Next slide, please. When I came to, to, to De Anza, I was told that, that there are some things that are truly important to us. Shared governance is important. Recognizing individuals for, for who they are um, and uh, making certain that people feel like they are a part of the institution is important. Um, and, and social justice is important to the institution and equity. And one of the things that, that, that you know, we've continued to do, and, and I, I say I'm, I'm, a, I'm a walking um, example of, of being able to move from situations to, 
from one situation to another situation uh, if opportunities present themselves. And so one of the things that we are doing to address equity, we know that we've got to have, it, have staff there to support our, our students. And so we, we hired a full-time counselor to, to serve our Black students in one of the learning communities. Um, we are providing workshops as well as uh, we are looking at what is happening in the classrooms, looking at the data, tracking the success rates for various populations, and really trying to, um, to close some of, those, some of those equity gaps. Um, I will tell you that, that it's, it's been interesting, you know, Thurgood Marshall, who was the first African-American Supreme Court justice, said that in recognizing the humanity of fellow beings, we pay ourselves the highest tribute. And so as a college, we are truly trying to, to bring that statement to life and recognize the humanity of each other and really try to, trying to, to, with that recognition, close some of those gaps that exist. Next slide, please. So one of the things that that we have that that has I'm so pleased with uh, with our communications uh, team at De Anza is we've begun this this series called uh, Candid and it's a multimedia series that we're doing some ongoing um, uh, uh, videos which really explore equity and social justice. Uh, and, and it's, it's pulling on the knowledge of, of the students, faculty, and staff who are at De Anza. So as these, as these videos are coming out, people are seeing themselves. Um, and it's, it's really a series that really asks each of us to get up on a daily basis, look in the mirror, and recognize who we are and what we do to, to really impact the lives of others in a positive manner. It asks us to examine ourselves and really, you know, peel back some of those layers that, that we don't oftentimes recognize within ourselves, but we see in other people. And so this particular uh, series that we're doing it really builds on the college-wide efforts that the college engaged in after the George Floyd uh, murder last spring. So next slide, I'm going to ask that we start this video. I just want to show you the trailer for this series. I sit here in the role of president but my skin color doesn't change. As the mother of a black son and a black daughter, there is a tremendous amount of fear and anxiety. These things are, are happening. They're traumatic. You know, we hurt behind this. It just came like a river to me. So it put me at a point where my education means nothing. My service as a veteran means nothing. The work that we do today will impact generations and generations to come. There's really no day that goes by where I'm like, okay, cool. I can take off my skin and just, or change my skin and just feel okay for the day. It's not really like that. You just, you know, this is it. Which is why I think I've felt like a, a desire to like want to do well in school because I want to, not necessarily prove them wrong, like other people wrong, but just to kind of like show myself that I can do it. Some of the best educational experiences or some of the learning doesn't take place in the classroom. It happens in between the margins. And hopefully we can start this dialogue. And my thing is, I'm not trying to persuade you. I'm just trying to give you information for you to kind of weigh. So, I mean, if you talk to affected communities, they know exactly what needs to happen. The question is, are we actually going to do those things? Thank you. Next slide. 
I want to move into talking about some of the things that we've done um, as a college as we've moved to as we move through the pandemic. Um, so in fall of, uh, fall of 2019, 21% of our classes were online. We now have about 97% as a result of the pandemic. You'll see some, some numbers here that I won't, won't read to you, um, but we truly are working very hard for us uh, to respond to the specific needs that individuals have with regards to uh, uh, surviving this, this pandemic uh, uh, and th with their um, their college experience. So next slide, please. We are providing services, you know, it's been interesting because there are so many things that we thought that we could not do online. Um, you know, we, we think about some of those student activities that we never would have thought we would have been able to do virtually. We are doing those things virtually. Um, you know, our, our Office of Communications, when we first went, went um, uh, did, went to shelter in place, uh, the, the Office of Communications responded to almost 5,000 questions between March and July when we moved to uh, a chat bot. So, uh, so we have quite a few um, uh, questions that we're responding to, but we want to make certain that students are getting the level of service that we need. Next slide, please. I told you that that students want that individuals want to feel like they belong. Even though we have have closed our campus, students still are reporting they feel like they belong at the institution. 89% of our students uh, said they felt like they belong some of the time or all of the time. 70% said they feel connected to other students and 81% feel connected to faculty and staff. This is from a survey that we did just recently in November. So we are, even though we are remote, we still are connecting with our students. Next slide, please. Again, as I talk about being a part of the community, I want to reiterate that the partnerships that, that we engage in are crucial. I came in as, as, the, new, as the president and, and, and I've said to, to Dennis Chima, who's online, I've said to Marissa, and as well as to, to various boards that I've, I've, or people I've encountered, let me know who those individuals are that I need to be meeting with, that I can meet one-on-one -on -one with. Um, you know, the, as, as reported earlier, you know, the, the relationship that we have with West Valley Community Services has been unbelievable. I walked into a situation where I was, I was so proud to look at the relationship that Deanza had with the chamber already uh, and the role that Marissa was playing with, with the chamber. Uh, that was extremely exciting to me. Uh, to be inducted in the Cupertino Rotary Club uh, last week, uh, a week ago Wednesday, uh, it really has been one of the highlights of, of my, my time here uh, in Cupertino. And we have opportunities to get in, engaged civically uh, with our Vasconcelos Institute of Democracy in Action. Next slide, please. So we welcome your support. Uh, you know, we are looking for, for internships for our students. Uh, we're trying to build our, our training, career training programs. Uh, you know, our, our students, they need support with, 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 uh, for their basic needs. And so not only do, do you support us um, by, by joining in and, and, and offering uh, supports through our foundation to support our basic needs efforts, but your support of, of West Valley Community Services, who's been a strong partner with us, that's extremely important to us. I want to mention that our foundation is, is about to undertake, um, uh, do a major undertaking uh, to raise funds to support basic needs for our students. So I ask that you join in, in that. Uh, next slide, please. As I said, our foundation is doing some amazing things. So, I, so I'd ask that you think about uh, how can you support the, the COVID-19 emergency fund for our students, our, our uh, scholarships, 
and as well as how can we engage to really have an impact on our workforce in, in the future. Uh, so you can learn more about our foundation at the website that's listed there. Next slide, please. Although we, our, our, and I think I'm almost at the end, um, but although our, our, um, our services are, you know, we're still connecting with our students. We're talking about right now, how do we to return to, to campus? I want you to know that health and safety is paramount for, for the work that we're doing. Uh, and we want to ensure that, that everyone is, is as safe as we can possibly be when we do return to campus. So there's extensive planning that's going on. And then we are, um, as a college, we are coordinating with and consulting with our district leadership, employee groups and governance, as well as our local health agency. Next slide. So with that, I think that people oftentimes will, will ask, um, so, so what is, what is your, your vision? I think that, that as the president of, of De Anza College, my hope is that each of us see that there are opportunities for, for, for the college to engage in, in, um, in, in things that are going to move not just the college and our students, but the community forward. But I think my, I also say that it's important for me as the new president coming in to get to know each and every one of you and find out what are the connections that, that, that currently exist that we can build upon? What are the connections that don't exist that we need to make happen? And, and how do we just build those relationships so that we are working together? So with that being said, um, I'll end my presentation here and, and thank all of you for the opportunity to, to engage in conversation with me. Great. Well, thank you so much, Lloyd. I imagine uh, there may be some questions. This group is famous for them. So um, we've got them here. The only bad question is the one you don't ask. So uh, if there's any virtual hands, go ahead and raise those if you're inclined and we'll call you out or you can raise your analog hands and we'll call on you for that also. Any question, Donna? And then Rain after Donna. I was kind of interested in um, if there was museum work or internship where we could, uh, I know work with the California History Center, but the Cupertino Historical uh, Museum also at Quinlan. And it would be a, a good opportunity to work with students in history in different, just different avenues. Yeah, I, I think that that's, that's uh, really a, a great, great um, opportunity for, for, uh, for our students. Um, and so, so I, I want to make certain that, that all of you, uh, when you have these ideas, please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, my email is homeslloyd at fhda.edu. Uh, so I would encourage you to, to reach out because I think there are some, some opportunities for our students that we haven't uh, explored as of yet, uh, but I'm really looking forward to, to building those opportunities. So please reach out to me. I'll put my email in the in the. Yeah, put it, chat. Put it yeah. Thank you, Rain. Uh, thank you. Uh, Lloyd, uh, you know, I've been watching those uh, development in education uh, area. So uh, colleges like MIT, Stanford, they are posting all those uh, instructions, videos online, free for everybody to use. Um, to me, that's a great opportunity to get some of the top education systems or information. I was wondering if there's any uh, thought or plan to kind of make use of some of those and giving the students uh, a great uh, education opportunity um yeah i i will i will say that you know yes um i think that one of the things that we've we've tried to do or that we're continuing to do is engage in conversations with uh with the with other local colleges four-year institutions um we are indeed looking at what are the resources that they're putting online um mm -hmm. and and we're also 
I, I want to want people to, to also recognize that Diaz is putting some amazing things online as, as, as well. And I mean, you look at the work of our, our community education programs, there are some amazing things that they're putting out there. And so um, I think it's, it truly is, we are all in this educational pipeline together. And so, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're not here to, to compete with other institutions. We're here to join with other institutions and ask that other institutions join with us. Thank you, Rashad. Uh, greetings, everybody. Rashad here, Star One Credit Union. Uh, um, Mr. Holmes, I, uh, I had a pleasure to uh, kind of meet you at the meet and greet last week, but um, on Friday night. But um, it's good. It's good to hear that presentation. Now, I, I just wanted to say that Star One does offer um, scholarships and, and internships every year, and also um, if you want to. Um, Provide any kind of finance, financial wellness education, basic personal, uh, basics on personal finance or personal finance for college students. Uh, we do offer that too as well. We've had um, we do um, workshops for, for Evergreen Valley College currently, Santa Clara University, and also San Jose State University too as well. So, if you, if you ever need any of those services, I'll be happy to to coordinate that for you. And I, I just wanted to, to to offer that up to you. Thank you. Thank you for your attention. I want to I want to thank you for 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 that offer. You know, as you know, as I, I oftentimes will, will say that that we as an institution, uh, we can't just give people a fish. We need to teach them how to fish. Because you know, the old adage is if you teach individuals how to fish, they can they can they can eat for a lifetime. And so, so we are. We we certainly appreciate those types of offers. We we do take people up on those. Uh, and then the other thing I will tell you is that that on our on our website we have a resource website that that we have have a whole number of resources that are listed there um, that we encourage students to to go in and uh, and engage with with some of those some of those resources. So thank you so much. Great. Sean, you have your hand up. Um, well, President Holmes, thank you so much for sharing your vision today. Um, we're really, really proud to have you as the fourth president, which is really um, impressive to know. Marissa Fatafor, um had mentioned that a couple days at a meeting we had, a board meeting for the Chamber of Commerce, and that's just impressive to know that there's been four presidents for uh, De Anza College, and you're the fourth. But um, what, I, what I wanted to kind of reach out and say is that, you know, uh, I believe the Chamber of Commerce as a board can also think about how we can be help support uh, the vision and uh, how we can be involved. Um, as you know, Marissa was our immediate past president um, of the board of directors and uh, we, another president on, is on the, in attendance on the call today, Rod Deardon. So I'm sure we'll, we'll have some discussion and um, and find some ways we can be involved with uh, uh, your vision. Well, I, I think that it, you know I'm I'm certainly un until the until this pandemic is over, uh, I think you all will probably find me uh, you know oftentimes asking, can I have a conversation? Can I have a conversation? Can I have a conversation about this or whatever? Um, and then and then I'm looking forward to that time when when we're able to meet over over you know a coffee or or a tea or over lunch, and really talk about what are our ideas. You know, if if De Anza College is going to be successful, it's not just me making that decision. We as a community have a jewel sitting you know in Cupertino that it's all of our responsibilities to figure out how to polish that jewel and make it shine even more than it already does and so so I want to say to to each of you that that yes I, I sit in in the role of president uh, but we're all in this together uh, in trying to figure out how we can grow this this amazing institution that we already have Great. Well, thank you. And before we let you go, uh, Lloyd, I, I wanted to know, moving from the the right coast and coming to coming to Cupertino, coming to Silicon Valley, 
What was that like? What were some of the big surprises maybe that you expected? And what were some of the big surprises that you were genuinely surprising? Um, you know, I, I have to say that I was, I was really, you know, living, living on the, on the East coast, you, you think about the Silicon Valley and, and, and you think about the, uh, the amount of wealth that's in the Silicon Valley. Um, and I never expected to come to an institution where I saw people struggling to eat. I just, that was that was a, a major a major surprise for me to be honest with you, um, but I but I also um, once I got here I mean some of the same struggles no I, I've realized that no matter where I've been we're all we all have some of those same struggles and we ha all have some of those same things that that we really should be 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 proud of. You know, we should be really proud that, as I as I said in the video, the work that we're doing today, it's not just going to impact the people of today. The work that we're doing today is going to impact generations and generations and generations, uh, and that's that's and that's why we do this work because we recognize that it is going to have an imp impact on the future. Um, you know, I was I was surprised that uh, there was as little rain as 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 there has been. Uh, <laughs> I was very surprised by by that. Uh, I was I was pleased that um, that I would this time of year I'm not shoveling snow. Uh, <laughs> so that's that's been wonderful. The weather has just been delightful. I, it's been interesting because I was having a conversation with my husband. Uh, a few days ago, and it was like, you know, 60 degrees, maybe the upper 50s, 58, 60 degrees. And I, I, I walked out of my apartment and this, this young lady had on a long wool coat. And I said to him, oh my God, how is she walking around in this coat? It is 60 degrees. And, and, and he reminded me, okay, Lord, you think about, you know, in, in, in Rochester, where, where we came from, you know, you know, it's, it's 30 degrees and you're walking outside on a t-shirt because it's warmed up. And he's like, you know, that you adjust. He says, just wait until next year. You'll be in a wool coat and it's 60 degrees. So, so it's stuff like that, that that's just, it's been amazing. Um, I have been surprised, been just overwhelmed by the, by the support that I've been given. Uh, by the welcome that I've received, uh, it truly has been amazing. And not for a second have I regretted uh, moving from, from New York to here. It's just been an amazing experience. And I know that the work that I, that I, that I or the, the relationships that I build through participation with the community is going to make the experience even that much better, so. Right. Well, thank you so much. We're, we're so glad to have you. And, and uh, in, in Cupertino, it's not six degrees of separation. It's more like two or three. That's, <laughs> that's, that's our secret. It's not, not a well-kept secret, but it's, I, I found it always to be true. So thank you so much for joining us. And uh, thank you, everyone else. Uh, we are a little over time, but I, I want to spend a few minutes uh, talking a little bit about uh, what's going on in the community just generally. And uh, I think there's no better person than that to talk about that. Yes, Deb, I'm looking at your little, your little window. You're about this big. Uh, Deb, do you want to give us a, an update on the city and then Angela, either one of you? I'd be happy to. Uh, pretty short. We've been focused primarily on um, vaccines and how to focus our vaccine distribution or the county's vaccine distribution into our community better and getting our community members over to vaccine. And the current focus is on seniors and particular seniors who do not use technology and perhaps are isolated at home or otherwise don't get out often and don't have care providers. So how do you get to those folks? to ensure that if they would like to get a vaccine, they can be vaccinated. 
so we are um, in heavy, di heavy discussions with um, the county uh, because they're the ones that the vaccine is getting distributed kind of through for uh, people that are uninsured. And then of course, um, our care providers have some distribution. Um, now's the time uh, to discuss that and set up the logistics on that because uh, as everybody has heard, it is true. We are short vaccines at the moment. Um, I just read along with many of you probably that the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is going through its kind of emergency approval process shortly in hopes that um, we're focused on that one because that one doesn't have the storage, you know, the frozen storage requirement, which makes a lot of logistics really difficult in terms of delivering the vaccine. In addition, it's a single doser. So that makes it faster to get everybody uh, vaccinated. Um, so we're focused on that. And other than that, uh, we had a wonderful uh, state of the city um, speech by our mayor, Mr. Darcy Paul, and uh, it's gone off well. Um, it is um, kind of refreshing for 2021. Um, and, uh, you know, city staff and I are focused on um, it, almost all of our work has been COVID focused or reporting on COVID funding we've received or so everything is kind of related. So we've been kind of overcome. And so we are thankful that you all are patient with any kind of deliverables, deliverables that we uh, owe you all uh, either as chamber or um, as individuals here on the um, on the Zoom. And I really appreciated the talk from from uh, Lloyd. That was, um, it was really nice, really a good, nice overview of all the statistics. First time I've actually seen one. So uh, that was very informative, informative for me. Thanks, let's go have a call. Thank you, Deb. Um, Angela, you're on the agenda, but uh, Deb mentioned uh, Mayor Darcy Paul, and uh, I did see that he did join us. So uh, thank you for joining us, Mayor Paul. Uh, Ang Angela, do you want to give a quick report? Sure. If there's, a, I'll keep it really um, brief. But again, thank you, Rick, and, and thank you, Dr. Holmes and Deanza College for serving as a really vital part of our community. Um, and I will just do our usual quick overview of things going on in Cupertino. If I can share my screen with you all, uh, if you can see that, this is our monthly development activity report. Uh, highlights in gray are things that have, um, have the newest updates. So you'll see as part of the EDSP, um, a mobile vendors ordinance uh, was brought to council. Uh, so this past Tuesday, it was supposed to be a second reading but because of a, a, an amendment, uh, a change to the ordinance. And again, this is an ordinance um, and regulations for push carts. Um, and the change was to uh, restrict push carts in the sidewalk vendors from uh, permitted special events. So that would be things taking place at Memorial Park. Um, they would not be allowed to be in the park uh, because most of these larger events have um, you know, food truck vendors as part of the special event. And so we didn't want that competition. Um, and so that is the ordinance that will be moving forward in two weeks for a second reading. The target remodel, if you've been driving by, uh, the site work is complete. Uh, so they have kind of that nice seating area towards the front um, on the street area, they've moved their, um, I think their pickup, uh, drive up, pickup um, delivery system to the back side. Um, and so that is complete. And let me go to the next page. So you'll see the forum, um, they are working through their villas. So nine of the 23 villas have been finaled. The next is objective standards. So the first phase of um, you know, drafts are looking at that uh, is anticipated for uh, later this summer. The bird safe and dark sky ordinance uh, will go back to council uh, on March 16th. We do have um, an economic development committee meeting scheduled for next Wednesday uh, for those who want to participate and provide feedback. Uh, no formal presentation because the, it would be the same presentations that have been given in the past by staff, but um, it's just a opportunity for you to provide feedback uh, to the staff who is working on this ordinance. 
And then the last uh, item is the general plan amendment authorization. Uh, so that was presented to council this past Tuesday um, and then direction was given to staff um, to continue work on that and to address some of the questions that came out of that discussion. And um, that's all I have, unless there are questions, I'm happy to answer. Thank you. Great, any questions for Angela or Deb? I'm seeing none. Uh, we are, uh, since we're already over time, I don't know if anybody else has a shout out, upcoming event or news item they wanna share with the group. Uh, please indicate. Uh, but I'm not seeing any, so in, in deference to everyone's Friday and, and our valuable time and a new concept I learned, Zoom fatigue, though I've been feeling it for quite a while. Have a great Friday, everyone. Thank you, Lloyd. Uh, welcome to Cupertino. And uh, we look forward to uh, doing whatever we can to help you be successful because your success is our success. Actually, Rick, let me um, make a quick announcement on one item that might be of interest to a lot of people. Um, on the 25th of February, Supervisor Simidian is having a, uh, a vaccine uh, informational session. So if you want to pencil that in into your calendars, um, that's scheduled for 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. And of course, that, that'll be video conference. Great. Thank you, Mayor Paul. Sure. Uh, and uh, the mayor reminds me of two things. One, this Saturday, uh, we are getting ready for summer. Uh, we are having our summer school, virtual summer school uh, camp. So uh, come by the, our Facebook page. There's about a dozen, uh, excuse me, about 10 different organizations, including, including the De Anza Academy. Come by, find out what it is that uh, your kids can be doing this this summer and even right away. And then lastly, uh, working with the city, we are asking for ambassadors for the county to help spread good information, current information about what's happening with uh, vaccinations, the virus, things like that. We'd love to sign you up for that. So reach out to Angela or to the chamber and we'll get you connected to be a, a, a COVID ambassador. It sounds ominous, but it's a really good thing. It's a really good thing. Super. Uh, anything else? Anything else? Well, that's it. Thank you, everyone. And we will, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye now.